What actually causes food cravings? Why do certain foods have so much power over us? My name is Elena and today I'm going to be tapping on a personal weakness of mine, this chocolate mousse. If you're wanting to overcome your own inner battle with certain foods, pause this video right now and go grab your favorite food or drink. Then come back and follow along with me as I use a process called emotional freedom techniques or tapping to improve our relationship with food and move from feeling powerless to being in full control. Beyond the visual satisfaction and the flavors and the textures and the smells of food lies the hidden cause of every food craving, a feeling. Many layers of discomfort can kick off a subconscious need to suppress certain emotions and our reaction to that discomfort is often to reach for food. The satisfying but temporary hit of pleasure that we get from food or drinks that are high in sodium and sugar and fat triggers a surge of chemicals that control the pleasure in the brain, such as dopamine and serotonin. These chemical levels start to drop pretty quickly after consuming processed foods, and this is how the cycle of junk food addiction begins. First we eat the ice cream or the potato chips, and then the chemical reaction in our body causes temporary pleasure, but it goes away really quickly, and so we reach for that same food again and again. And here's the emotional cycle that happens with our food cravings. It all starts when we subconsciously feel emotional discomfort. Maybe it's loneliness or sadness or low self-esteem or boredom or fear or a lack of self-love. So the amygdala in our brain activates the fight, flight, freeze response, which causes us to seek out safety and pleasure. And often, instead of processing the uncomfortable emotions, we reach for processed foods. So how does tapping actually work for food cravings? Well, we put the meaning on food. Many of us subconsciously associate certain foods to certain memories from our past. Maybe eating baked goods subconsciously reminds us of visiting with grandma and eating her homemade cookies with her when we were young. Or we remember being on summer vacation and drinking a cold Coke on a hot sunny day, which we subconsciously related to relaxation and feeling carefree. So now as adults, when we are lonely or stressed out, we reach for the foods that represent grandma's love or the lazy days of our youth. Tapping on the energy meridian points, just like with acupuncture, sends a calming signal to the amygdala in the brain, and this interrupts the stress response in the body. And as the body relaxes, the programmed response to the initial discomfort begins to change. We are literally changing the neural pathways in the brain to reprogram our response to stress and discomfort. Tapping helps to release the emotional attachment to these foods. It's an effective way to feel good so that you no longer need to indulge in those self-sabotaging behaviors in order to get the results you desire. So now, take a look at the food or drink that causes these uncomfortable cravings. And if you don't have it in front of you, that's okay. Even if you're tapping along with me about this chocolate mousse, it can still apply to any other food because it's not about the words, but it's mainly about the feelings. So you can substitute this chocolate mousse for your own food or drink and switch out my descriptions for your own. Or you can just follow along by saying exactly what I say as we move our way through the process. If you don't have the food in front of you, imagine it now. And if you are holding it, take a close look and notice what is most appealing about it. Is it the color? Does it look smooth and glossy? If it's a salty or savory food, does it look crispy and crunchy? As you hold it in your hand, notice the different sensations, like the crinkling bag or the sound of you opening the can or the packaging. Even the sounds play into the satisfaction of our cravings. Now rate your craving on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is you just need to eat it right now. So taking full responsibility for your own well-being. We'll be starting by focusing on the craving and being honest with ourselves about how this food makes us feel. Follow along as we start by tapping on the karate chop point. The karate chop point is right below the baby finger on the side of your hand. So tapping gently, repeat after me. 
even though I have this craving, I accept myself and how I feel. Even though I have a need to fill something that is missing, I choose to accept and forgive myself and anyone else in my life who taught me to give in to cravings. Even though this food has so much power over me, I'm ready to take control and move this craving out of my body. Now on the eyebrow point, right where the eyebrow starts, this craving for chocolate on the side of the eye, I have no control over it. Under the eye, on the bone, I really want this chocolate above the chin. This craving comes over me so often. Now under the collarbone on either side, chocolate picks me up when I'm tired. Back to the eyebrow. I need this chocolate. Side of the eye. When it's in front of me, I have no control. And I eat it until it's all gone. Even when I'm not hungry. I can't control myself. And then I beat myself up emotionally. Now take a deep breath in through the nose and an even longer exhale. We're just intensifying the feelings that come up from the different aspects of the food. So now I want you to smell it and describe what you're noticing. On the eyebrow point, that sweet chocolatey smell. Side of the eye. It smells so good, so satisfying. The smell is so familiar. It brings up so much pleasure. It adds to my weakness for this chocolate. It takes me back to my past. I'm releasing my attachment to it. My attachment to this sweet aroma. Detaching from the smell. Letting go of its power over me. Okay, now take a deep breath in and out. Now take a bite and focus on the taste and the texture and describe what you notice. On the eyebrow point, that smooth chocolatey texture, side of the eye, that sweet chocolatey hit. It tastes so good. I could eat it all day long. Even though I know my body doesn't want it. What does this taste remind me of? What memories and feelings is it connected to? Instead of reaching for chocolate, I'm choosing to soothe myself with love and self-care. So if what I'm craving is not for my highest good, I choose to clear that voice inside me that tells me I deserve and need this chocolate. I choose to treat my body with love and respect. So now breathe lots of love in and an even longer exhale. On the eyebrow point again, 
letting go of any choice that brings harm to my body. I'm releasing the need to give in to the old craving. I'm starting to feel some control. I'm listening to my body. What does my body actually want? Maybe I'm not even hungry. Maybe it wants some natural food from a garden and not from a factory. Maybe it just wants some water. I can breathe deeply and listen to my inner guidance. So take a deep breath in and out and back to the eyebrow. I'm clearing any remaining craving, clearing it at a cellular level, clearing it all the way back through my past. I used to think my cravings helped me, but I'm finding better ways to help myself. It feels good to treat my body with care. I'm creating a new relationship with food. I feel empowered as I make better choices for my body. I deserve to treat my body with love. I have everything I need within me. I put the meaning on chocolate. Chocolate is not the problem. The problem is that I mistake chocolate for love. I use it to self-soothe when I feel a lack of self-love. Instead of reaching for something outside of myself, I'm finding clarity and understanding from within. Okay, breathe lots of love in and an even longer exhale. Now take another bite and sense into any changes. Re-rate your craving on the one to 10 scale. How intensely do you still feel powerless to this food? Also, take note if it tastes differently. Some people say that the flavors will actually change on your palate. The sweetness can become toned down or bitter or even unbearably sweet. Or if you're eating salty foods, the sharpness can become more pronounced or even bland. Or drinks can become syrupy sweet or even flavorless. It's as though our body wants to help us by reducing the satisfaction as we recondition the mind from the self-sabotaging attachments to these specific foods. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it's worth noting if it does. Hopefully at least, the powerless feeling has diminished. In the comments section below, share if the tapping has decreased your craving or maybe changed the taste. Even if you just notice that your body is not as tense and is more relaxed, that is the result of you spending some precious time with that part of you that you've been avoiding. The mind-body connection is truly mind-blowing to me. I love how we can change our physical experience by changing our mind at a subconscious level. My personal objective is not to deprive myself of food that I genuinely enjoy, but rather to know that it no longer has control over me. And if I'm enjoying even one single bite of it, that might be all I need. I want to maintain a healthy relationship with food where I'm not battling with guilt and regret, but rather filled with satisfaction and self-control and pleasure and appreciation as my choices support my body. 
It is so empowering to listen to our body and respect its boundaries. And I want this for you too. So spend as much time as you need repeating the tapping process in the video until you bring your battle with food down to a zero. You got this. You deserve to take your control back. Eating and drinking to nourish your body and to experience pure pleasure is what it's all about. Remember, you put the meaning on things. When you transform the experience of eating and drinking into one of pure pleasure and self-care, the results show up in the ultimate enjoyment of listening to your body and responding to what it's asking for. Thank you for watching and for tapping into your true self as you make choices that suit your body and your highest good.